going to try to analyze some Tetris data. I uh, made a post today on Facebook and on Twitter asking for people to send me their uh, Tetris 99 data. And I uh, thought it might be fun to analyze that uh, on the stream with you guys. So uh, for those of you who happen to join live, feel free to you know, ask questions or offer suggestions or whatever. And if you're watching uh, after the fact, uh, hope you enjoy. So I went ahead and imported the data. We'll go ahead and take a quick look at what that looks like. Actually, I'm not sure if you can see that. But what we've got here are players. So we've got five players, and they submitted their data to me in diff for different modes. So we've got um, complete data all of for uh, for Invictus for Qs Ace uh, under the all category um, uh, for for me Invictus and Tetris ninety nine the all category for Divine uh, J J Aver all Invictus and Tetris ninety nine and uh, Pa. All of the Invictus and Tetris 99. So we've got um, some decent things that we can work with here. So when we look at this in a slightly different way, uh, we've got four things that we can use with all and so forth. So it looks like it might be pretty fun to take a look at the all data. The problem with that is we're not going to be able to calculate win rate, but there may be some interesting things there. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. I have not looked at this yet, aside from actually keying the data in. So let's see. We've got, um, let's just go ahead and put our players here. Let's limit our game mode to just all. And let's start to look at some of these stats, like all clears, singles, That and instead just do total lines. Now, one thing, let's go ahead and get games played. Should be games played. Total games played. Total games played doesn't is not come into account for all because there is no total games played for all. So we're going to have to change our mode. Let's go instead to like this. four players, three for 99. Let's go with Invictus. Invictus four players. So here's our total games. So it might be interesting to look at uh, these stats per game because obviously they're going to be higher if you play more games. So let's create a calculated fee for the sum of the total. Let's see. Where the bottom of the spreadsheet is, that's where I am. Um, not sure which. You... <laughs> <laughs> okay, I thought you were talking about being able to see my screen. So you're the first person who's actually joined the stream, Jeno. So can you just confirm that you can see Tableau and everything looks fine because I don't have double monitors. So I'm just relying, I'm just hoping that it looks okay. Actually, that would not be a sum. Okay, good, good, good. Thank you for confirming. Oops, yeah, total games played. So we want the total lines divided by the total games played. That would give us our total lines per game. For sure, good, good, good. So let's take a look at that. So let's just kind of do some, some basic math here. So we've got 75,000 lines divided by 623. Just a quick calculator check, just to make sure. 75,662 divided by 
So that's good. So this is our lines per game. So really, I think all of these stats should be in the per game. Um, so let's just go ahead and duplicate that. And we'll do singles per game and so forth. This part is pretty monotonous. Um, Jeno is uh, how is the, I'm on the uh, um, the Wi-Fi of the uh, hotel. I was actually wanting to st to stream playing Tetris, but um, the Wi-Fi was too slow. So, I, but I figured it would be okay for this. Is the stream quality okay? I'm only getting like three megs down. Yeah, that's great. Okay, cool. Thank you. So actually, I I was um, I'm on vacation this week. Not really vacation, but I took time off of work work to actually come and teach Tableau. So I'm I'm down in San Antonio uh, this week teaching a Tableau course. So <laughs> I've been in this all day long, and believe it or not, I actually could not wait to get to get to the room to do to do this. So, I don't know what that says about me. Uh, Tetris is per game. Tetris line players. Did you bring your <laughs> You know, they had that. I tried hooking up to the TV uh, in the hotel room so that I could see this better because I feel like I'm way too close for the mon tiny monitor screen. I feel like I'm zoomed in way too close to the camera. I felt bad for you guys but I could not get this stupid TV. There was no remote to change the input. I could plug into it, but I uh, I couldn't actually um, switch the input, which is stupid. Singles per game, doubles per game, uh, triples per game. I get that you can't see it. Let's see. Okay, good. I appreciate that. Good. Thanks for letting me know. Um, so yeah, I actually talked to uh, CMAR today. Um, I gave him a call because because um, I got the heads up from from Chris. Um, he gave he kind of shot me a text message just to let me know he wanted to not you know. So I gave him a call. He he was doing he was doing he was doing okay. He he said he knew it was coming and. Um, he was actually preparing for it, and I think it'll end up being for the best. Okay, singles played, singles per game, okay, and so forth. Yeah, he said singly, yep. So this is already looking a little bit interesting. So really our, um, if we were just to make a heat map out of this, it might be interesting. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, let's make this be... Let me text him on. So this was pretty cool because um, uh, Iman, um, my, my, you know Iman, Iman was actually taught the first two days of this course. So he taught Monday, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. Got to bring him in. I know. And, um, and I took over the last two days. Let me just find his message. I gotta figure out how to get the link to send him. Share link channel. Cool. There we are. All right. Hopefully he'll join. Send to your website. Yeah, that's true. I could have done that. But what I think I need to do on these guys is actually change this to square. Nope. 
Uh, maybe it is actually bar. Yep, that's what it is. And then this measure value needs to be negative one. This way. Yep. Edit this axis. To hard code it to be one. That way, what I'm doing is I'm forcing the bars to be exactly the same. And then I'm going to change the size to fill them up. That just gives me the, that heat map type look. And then I want to color on measure values. And then I can have these. So what's happening here is 623 is dominating because obviously it's bigger than any other number. So it's everything is scaled on the same um, it's shaded on the same scale, but Tableau had this new feature a couple uh, years ago that allows you to separate those legends out. So now we can have a heat map per column. Okay, cool. Iman, you're on, right? Actually, I got to see what you're called on here. Um, so what I'll do here is I'll get rid of this, and there we go. There's a pretty cool little heat map that we've got. So some other stats that might be interesting to see here. And actually, let me just do a little bit of formatting. Something like that. Hey, e, are you in? Let's see here. <laughs> you got to chat in, in, in on Twitch instead of texting me, man. I can't just pick up, uh, this makes me pick up my phone to see what you said, chat in, chat in Twitch, uh, Iman. All right, so, um, <laughs> so we'll see what his name is when he comes in. Um, okay, so something else that would be actually interesting is the win rate. So one of the metrics that we have is number of wins. So obviously we would want to get number of wins per game. So I'll go ahead and create a calculated field. And this one is going to be, actually all it would be would just be the average of, um, no it wouldn't because it's, I don't have game by game. Okay, so it'll be win rate. All it would be is just the wins divided by the games played. And that's going to give us our win rate, which would be really interesting to see. Now, of course, we're going to want that to be a percentage. So default properties, number format, percentage. OK, so we can see our different win rates here. Um, so. That's pretty cool. Let's see what this looks like when we switch over to Tetris 99. That is pretty, pretty cool. Let's put our game mode, instead of putting it on a filter, let's do it that way. And go ahead and filter here. And take out all. So that's pretty interesting. That is pretty cool. Yours is highest. I know. Well, it's because um, I had some other players who I know for sure will be higher than mine, but their data was a little bit incomplete. So like Divine, I'm, I'm, I'm so certain his is going to be way higher than mine, but uh, and probably Kelvin as well, but uh, both of theirs were incomplete. So the data that I have that's complete for uh, Divine is only is all. So these are really good players too, um, but uh, yeah, it just happens to be, I have one of the highest ones here, but um, I actually think the scale should probably be different for these modes because Invictus is the winner's only mode. So the competition there is a lot harder, so which makes sense why these win rates are so much lower. But the problem is the scale is resetting, or is not, uh, re doesn't reset per column here. So what I think we should do is have these be separate. But it is kind of interesting to see it like this, but we'll have them be separate. So what I'll do, though, is um, it'd be interesting to see some more stats. But the problem is it gets overwhelming. Um, like 
all of these stats would be really, really cool to see like T spins per game, T spin doubles per game, total holds per game, all those things would be awesome, but obviously it would be way overwhelming. Um, let's just take a look at this. Hey, Aaron, um, Geno, can you tell me, can you see this pop up here that says view data sheet and has all this data? Oh, there's Amon. All right. Um, all right, Amon. Thanks for joining, man. Can you guys confirm? Okay, you cannot see that. Okay. So, um, Iman is is our Tetris Jedi. He knows, I'm sorry, not Tetris, uh, Tableau Jedi. So, Iman, I'm working, I put out uh, a request to get some data from, from Tableau, from, I'm sorry, some Tetris data from some fellow players in the community. So, they were nice enough to send me uh, some data. So, now I'm just kind of exploring it and thought it would be fun to to, to try to like explore this you know on Twitch. So you know, if you have any ideas, um, you know, feel free to type them in chat there. Um, I went at, one thing that I did was um, was actually went and got all the stat screens as images. So like one of the data fields that I have here is actually image name. So this will allow me to link to actually show maybe in the tooltip, the uh, image that actually shows the stats of what they sent me. So, <laughs> so let me go ahead and copy that into my Tableau repository. I know you guys can't see this, but um, for some reason I can't share my entire screen. I guess it's whenever I only have one screen, it maybe gets into an infinite loop or something. Um, Stats. Paste those in there. So now what I'll do is I will associate these with images. So I will put the image name. Actually, the first thing I need to do is change this to image or picture shape. Uh, shape. I'm going to add image name to define that shape. Then I need to go in and reload my shapes. Stats. So it's going to inside that palette and apply. It should be in alphabetical order, hopefully. So let's go ahead and fill this entire view and hide this. Let's see what this looks like. Show this, uh, show player as a filter. And just show one person. Let's see if that's me. Why do I have two? Oh, because I also need the game mode because there's multiple images so show filter and if i only look at that is that me yes that is me cool okay that's my image so if i switch here Mine does not have that. Let's do this. So the body list. Mine only has all. That that's me. That's my all. That's my Invictus. It's not working. Mm hmm. Working for Q A sign Victus. It's working for my all, my Invictus, but not my T ninety nine. Hmm. Okay, I'll circle back to that later. But basically, what I like to do is, whenever you hover over this, I like to that show in the tooltip. So I'm going to name this sheet tooltip. Well, oh, that's going to be way too big, though. It's way, too, it's way too big to have in a tooltip. Um, maybe just a... <laughs> okay, well, forget the images for now. I'll have to think of something to do with that. I think it could be cool. But let's just say this is going to be... Um, T99 stats, sub, 
Ya, enough. Uh, no, um, I'm not sure yet because the way I received them this time was actually like really, really hard because um, they were all, it was, it was pretty hard to put them all together. So I got to really think about the best way for me to, to, to accept these. And I don't know if I want to get overwhelmed quite yet. Um, but yes, we'll eventually, and thank you for helping with that. We don't need this anymore. Oh, we do need that. We have to have this, otherwise, whenever we pass it to, we just need it in the detail, is all we need. We need to know what this is later if we ever want to filter on anything. Okay, so now if we were to just make a little dashboard with this, just to kind of start to put some stuff together. And, but I still need to figure out, well, those are, those are enough interesting stats for now. I'll come back and explore that a little bit more. But there was some, there was a really interesting number that I saw in here, and it was called Tetramino Rotations. Check this out. So we put player, uh, game mode, and we only want all here. And we have these stats for Tetramino Rotations, Tetramino Drop Distance. So what might be interesting would be to look at the tetromino rotations per something. Because that would tell us if you were more efficient in spinning your pieces or not. So obviously you're going to have more tetromino location rotations if you've played more games. There needs to be, could it just be lines cleared? No, what it should be is the number of singles, the number of doubles, the number of triples, and the number of tetrises, because that's every single time something was cleared. I don't necessarily care how many lines were cleared, because what I want to know is per drop, how many times you're putting a piece down, how many rotations did that take? So I think you would add up singles, doubles, triples, and addresses, just the, the numbers, not multiplying it by anything. Okay, that's, that's what it would be. So what would that be called? Um, a drop? Yeah, rotations per drop. So we'll do a calculated field. Um, question, Jenna, whenever I go into a calculator, do you see the, a pop-up that says calculation one? Would be our... No, that's too, that's too bad. Dang it. I, I, can, I need to um, do this from home when I can share my entire screen. So for now, I'll, I'll just kind of try to figure uh, dictate. So I'm doing rotations for drop, and I'm calculating that as total or tetramino rotations divided by um, singles plus doubles plus triples plus Tetris line clears. Let's see what that looks like. Rotations per drop. Three, four, interesting. Default properties, number format, we want one decimal. 2.9, 3.8, 4.6, That's pretty interesting. Um, it's unfortunate that we don't have this same thing on the other screen that could then tell us do fewer rotations per drop lead to higher win rates. Even you kind of can get there, but you have to look at the data separately because it's not the same exact data set. But by looking at it, you oops, wrong one. You could I think that would suggest that, right? So if you were to look at rotations per drop and sort that, so that would be, and then sort these by win rate, is there a correlation there? That's why isn't that sorting? Hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not sorting at all. Uh, I can make these, instead of being a heat map, I can make them bar. That would make it easier to sort, but we'll just have to get by for now. So let's see here. So we've got 2.9. Those are, those are the higher ones. Two widths. Yeah, got it. Yeah, I know. With more data, it's only going to be even more interesting. So then we've got, well, divide, we don't have his win rate. And then PA, 3.97, Javer. I mean, it looks like that, that might be something there, which could be really interesting because then, you know, people talk about how it's really important to rotate less. And, you know, it's something that I, I learned, I, I'm still learning, but trying to do and use both buttons and things like that. And um, so it could be really interesting to see, is there something to support that theory of less rotations and, and things like that? So you know, maybe that's something we can explore. Let's see, what else do we have that might be interesting? Oh, KO badges earned. That might be interesting. So if we were to say KO badges earned, it's hard for old school. <laughs> yeah. Um, KO badges earned. Let's see if that would be per game. Let's see if some of this per game stuff in there. Um, let's just copy this one. So the KO badges, badges earned divided by games played, and this would be Badges per game. This would be, this is going to be really interesting to see. So badges per game. We'll make sure that's going to be a default to one decimal place. Let's see, I bet this, I bet there's a, it'd be interesting to see if there's a very high correlation between that and the win rate. There is. Um, Regular badges per game. 1.8, yep. They're pretty direct. Ooh, uh, yeah. That seems to be pretty strong. So, what would be cool is imagine this with 100 players instead of four, and then putting that on a scatter plot. It would be really, really, really interesting to see how strong some of these correlations are. Um, like, look at Tetris's per game. It's old, like when I first started playing Tetris 99, I was all about the Tetrises. And it wasn't until I ran the analysis on it that I figured out, oh, like getting more Tetrises doesn't lead to getting more wins. Um, it's, it's, so let's go ahead and put the T-spins in here because that's, um, yeah, that could be interesting. Even more, even lines per game. Although that's a, that's a, that's a pretty good win rate. Um, but you know, there's there's a there's a, a decent lines per game difference here, but not much of a difference on the win rate here. And then you know, these lines per game here don't really correlate to these differences here. So I don't think lines per game means much. I don't think Tetris's per game mean much. But badges per game certainly do. Um, let's see, let's look at T-spins per game, T-spin doubles per game, scatter plot with chancers, <laughs> maybe, it might be look ridiculous if you had a lot, but yeah, in theory, it would be cool. I wanted to do that with my, um, with my Tetris 99 dashboards that I had made before, but, um, oh, drops per game, oh, that's a good one, um, I can't do missed drops per game, but I could do total um, piece placements per game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll call that total drops. Um, but yeah, I, I was, I was, I was wanting to kind of do something with the um, Tetris blocks. I couldn't make it look not silly. It was just too much. But I ended up just going with the colors. But I would love it if you could figure something out. Um, but anyways, let's take a look at total drops. It's gonna be singles plus doubles plus triples, plus tetrises, 
my character's limit. There's just total drops. And then I need total drops per game. games played and what i what i would really love to get is the individual game data because what's a little bit unfortunate about this data is this is just people you can kind of see it here these are the summary stats that um that are on your stat screen in tetris so as you play tetris and you go to the stats it just tells you like hey you've played a total of like 400 games it's basically just you know these type stats but you don't know how many times you finish second or fifth or 90th, you have no idea. They all tells you how many times you played and how many times you've won. But you don't have any of that placement stuff. So I was also really interested to see, you know, um, are there certain play styles that result in um, more consistent placement? Um, so like maybe a person might have a higher win rate, but they have a lot of games where they also finish 50th. You know, that could be really interesting to see what that variation looks like. Um, because I myself I think I play very conservatively and I don't get that many KOs and badges. Um, but I tend to like consistently get in the top 10, but my win rate is not as high as it could be if I played more aggressively. So I'd be really curious, but, but I, can't, I can't really see that with the data that I have. Um, okay, but anyways, back to, back to total drops per game. Let's see what this is done here. So that is interesting because what this is telling, okay, lines per game, what would be interesting is drops per line because that would, would that tell us the efficiency? But you know what? First, I want to get to T spins, T pin doubles per game because that was where I was going and I kind of got distracted with the drops. Thank you for the suggestion, but let me get back to that because that was going to be really interesting. So T. Spin doubles per game. It'd be interesting to also do. No, please keep the suggestions coming. This is great. This is why I'm doing this on stream so that I could like think of stuff. Because otherwise, I'm just sitting here, you know, staring at it. Uh, T spin doubles uh, divided by total games played. He spin triples will be interesting too, but the problem is not that many people in this list here actually do T spin triples, so there's not enough data to work with yet. Um, total lines per game. We'll just do it here. Key spin doubles per game. Hmm. Not much of a correlation here between win rate, which is interesting. So it's not about the Tetrises per game. But really, the only thing that we what we found so far that even equates to anything is our um, what was it the badges per game, right? Where did that one go? I take it out. Okay, oh, badges, oh, badges per game. Oh, that's why. So our badges per game is a pretty strong correlation, and then our other correlation that we saw was um, the uh, rotations per drop. So that's that's pretty interesting. But I know Divine has a higher win rate than me, so this would be interesting to explore if there's anything there. Um, hmm. All right. Well, what I think I'll do is I do just want to kind of package this up and publish it. And then, then um, I don't want to spend too long working on this. I don't want to take you guys for too long. Um, so let's see. How could I try to package this up? What are the interesting stats here? Singles per game. Yeah, oh, yeah, this is interesting. 
oh, I know what I can do to make it more readable. Let's go that way. I need my player names to the top. Analysis. Out. Iman, how do I move the table layers to the top? I don't want to make a double axis for this. That would be stupid. Works better. Let's see if I do this. That kind of works. The headers, yeah. I mean, that's kind of dumb that I have to duplicate the axis like that. But is there a way to do it without duplicating the axis? Like these player names? Can I get them to the top? Advanced. Analysis, but advanced. Under the analysis tab, analysis, there is no advanced. I'm gonna go slow so that you can have time to catch up. What am I missing? Sorry, I'm probably too close to the camera. Um, oh, it's because it's a bar chart. That's why, is there a way to make this a heat map? This just in, breaking news, Tableau Legend defeated. Yeah, 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 hilarious. Well, this isn't a bar, so the problem is, Amanda, I didn't make this, uh, I made it a bar chart. So how would I make this a heat map uh, in a more efficient way? This is why I, this is when I texted you earlier, I was asking how I would make this, how do I make a heat map, I can't remember, with multiple measures like this. So I made it the bar, with a minimum number of records of one and hard coded the axis of one. It's okay. What I'm going to do for now is I'm going to cheat, unless you can tell me um, the screen is not showing your tab. Oh, well, that's dumb. Sorry. It, yeah, the problem is I made it a bar chart. So I just clearly did it wrong, and I'm going to need your help whenever I am um, on my screen at home when I can actually share my whole screen. This works. This is actually kind of nice because you can you can um, you can see the header at the top and the bottom, and then I just think we're probably yeah. This I think this works. So now I can show actually a lot. Like I can show more because it's just a, a scrolling. So I could go ahead and show t spin triples per game. Ooh, there's total KOs. That's going to be interesting. Any total KOs per game. calculated field total KOs per game total KOs per game Audrey says hi hey Audrey hope you're doing all right thank you for letting Jeno join I love having him here total KOs per game oh look at that that's awesome yeah, this is really interesting. So I kind of like the the nice. What do you think is a good spacing? Do that. That, that feels pretty good. And then I, I can put some more stats in here. So what else would be interesting? Let's see. Highest place does not make any sense. Back to backs. 
could be interesting because that would tell you, are you hanging on and only clearing tetrises and T-spins? So yeah, that would be cool. So we will do create calculated field, back to max per vein. Come on, they told me I went too fast today in training. They said that whenever you left, they felt really confident, and then today I shook their confidence, which I was surprised at. See, this is what I thought. So by, by saying back-to-backs per game, well, actually, there's not a correlation there at all. So. Tetramino drop distance. What is that? So I'm going to this other tab because this is only in the all data. All things. All. Um, it's difficult to like, I like describe that in a tab. Um, all stats is only in these things. Again. Oh, hey, I see. How you doing, man? I need your stats. So what I'm doing is putting together some different um, stats here. I had uh, some of these different players send me their their screenshots, photos. So you know, like these photo, these images, and so I just kind of transcribed them into data, and now I'm um, I'm putting it together, putting together a little analysis, and so I'm hoping that uh, I know I'm hoping to get some some more data. Um, so if, I'd love it if you could just send me some screenshots. Um, you can do it on, on Twitter, or you can join the Discord and send them to me there. But uh, yeah, this is, this is what we're doing. So let's see here. Let's go back to this. So back-to-backs per game. Let's see what else we can figure. Oh, yeah. So this Tetramino. Um, <laughs> Iman, I'll let you tell the story so I can focus on this. So we have this Tetramino drop distance. So what is that it's such a crazy huge number so i wonder if we did tetramino drop distance per game what that would look like so tetramino drop distance per well really it would be per drop because it's it's um it's every time you dropped a line so it'd be tetramino drop drop distance per drop so it'd be our, our total drops. Let's see if there's anything interesting there. I don't even know what this means. Total drops. Okay. What is a tetramino drop distance? Let's see. Huh. I don't even know. He will, but how, you, <laughs> how much data do you want? Um, so whatever you would like for me to track, I just need all of those stats. So if you want me to track all, you know, your your Tetris 99 stats, then just send me just photo, um, just take us uh, like a photo, and um, and then you can send it to me on Twitter, um, or you can join the Discord and send it there. But I just need to make sure you get all the stats. Um, so for Tetris 99, that requires three screenshots. For Invictus, it's three screenshots. And then the other one that, that, that I have is under the All tab. So under the All tab, it has some interesting things like number of rotations, Tetramino drop distance, total time played, which is not in um, total times played. Uh, where did that go? Time. Total play time which 1900, uh, it's weird. But anyways, there's some really interesting stats in there that I think could be, um, might be interesting. So like one of the ones was Tetramino rotations. So what I did is I figured the number of those total number of rotations that are in that all screen divided by the number of times a piece was dropped. And then that tells us how many times you spend the pieces on average before dropping it. And then it's kind of interesting to see that, that that seems to lead to higher win rates 
in the other modes. So, um, you know, when you, when you take a look at this and you kind of see it all together and start to put some of these things together, it's like, oh, like, what are the things that affect win rates? Um, so that's, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of cool. So anyways, let me go ahead and go back to this. Are you, um, oh yeah, it was, it was, um, it was crazy there. The lady is so grouchy. Anyways, back to backs per game. Okay. Let me just tidy this up and I'm going to go ahead and delete this one. And we'll delete this one. Duplicate this one. Actually, before I do that, I want to get rid of all of this. It's just overwhelming. Who cares? Actually, there's a faster way to do this. Come on, if you know a faster way that's besides going through these one by one, please let me know. So we do have uh, Iman in the house, who is a Tableau expert, way better than me. So I have him here to help me out when I need it. All right, so now we're gonna duplicate this. Oh, actually, let's go ahead and get these, um, let's get something cool in the tooltips. Let's see if there's anything cool we could put in there. Like, um, you know, that, that image might look pretty cool actually, when you hover over the person's name for that to pop the, the, uh, the image. Let's see what that looks like. So we'll call this um, uh, game images. And we'll say on this tooltip, let's just get rid of all, well, let's just leave, let's get rid of all that for now. And instead put this guy That's pretty freaking cool. You can actually see the screenshots. The problem is obviously it's too small to see. Um, do you guys see the tooltip? Jeno, all right, man, I appreciate you. Um, thanks for stopping by, man. Thanks for all your help. Let's see what happens when I make this bigger. 600 by 600. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. It's kind of big though. I could, if I could just put like a link that would say three minutes, I should probably do not make it so big and say click to view full image or something like that. So let's go ahead and put some more things in here and we'll put the player name. You do see it, okay, cool. Put the player name, we'll put um, the date as update. Um, and then we'll put the game mode. And that should be it. So we'll say player name. We'll say stats as of as update. And then we'll say mode. And we'll put that there. And then we'll say click to view full image. Something like that. That's pretty cool. That's too much care though. So then on the dashboard, we'll put that action so that it will go to the other one and filter it out over here on the game image. Uh, yeah, so it's going to look like that, and that's fine. I do need to go through and make sure my game images are actually uh, correct. Um, that's easier to do when I can use my full screen, so I'll do that later. Um, so then we'll go, all we got to do now, I think this is done. So is there any, are there any other stats that we might want? So total games played, singles, doubles, triples, tetrises, two 
triples. Let's do two spin triples. Why not? Divided by total games played, and it's actually what it needs to be called Q's. Ha! <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. None of us do them in any kind of way that's. <laughs> I've never done one in an Invictus game, that's for sure. Let's see. Tetris 99. Still another thing that can't be right. I know that's a few spin triples. Oh, well, yeah, 107 divided by 1800. So, really, that just needs to be a few spin triples per game. It's just a number that's smaller than zero. So, default property is not good for that. There we go. That's not really interesting at all. Um, perfect or all clears would be the same. Oh yeah, back to backs per game. We got that. So I think this is good. So let's just put this back on Invictus. Let's make this be single value list. Don't need this. Let's duplicate this. Change this to T ninety nine stats. Then I think we're done. And then there's that. And then our all stats. So let's see. I think I should just flip this. Okay, Iman, can you tell me how to make this a um, a, a heat map in a more efficient way than making it a bar chart? And while you type that up, I am going to see if I can figure out how to get total playtime in here. Let's make this not what I want. Oh, man. I also need your help figuring out how to get total playtime in a usable form. Like if I wanted to say number of hours played. So total play time, I guess that would just be that in hours, right? So, or minutes. Okay. So, I would do the date diff in minutes. That just seems dumb. I shouldn't have to do date diff. Measure value would need to go on color marks. Okay, measure values goes to color, and then I, and then I just put the measure name and measure value in the label, and then it goes that way, right? So how do I? I have multiple measures. So how do I get this to be? It's not square. Or it is a square. Okay, it's just a square, and now I have the player names at the top. So that's what I should do on these versus having it be a bar chart, right? That way I don't have to have double axis. Although it is actually kind of nice to have the names at the bottom too. So I'll just leave that one. Now, can I do the, I can do this. I can still make this be multiple measures, right? Yep. Cool. Perfect. So Tetramino drop distance, I think is some weird Stat. I don't know what it means, so measure names on columns. Okay, perfect. You think I should flip these is what you're saying. I was going to go ahead and keep the players going this way for now since I have so few. I have more stat categories than I have players for these. So I was just going to leave it this way for now, but eventually I will definitely need to change it. Um, yeah, okay. okay. Cool, thank you, Iman. Um, so then the next question is, how can I get total playtime, which as you can, well, basically what total playtime is looks like, um, 
looks like this. So how can I get this to hours? Would it just be uh, hours? Let's see. Hours is not a thing. Uh, it would have to just be date. I taught Tableau all day, especially date functions. You would think I would know. Date parse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because total playtime would be really interesting here, because then you could see date part hour. Okay, so that would be um, total hours played, and it would be date part of. Oh wait, no, dang it. Hmm. convert date to hours. Convert date and time to time only. Yeah, that's what I want. Date part, hour, date. That would grab the hour. But, okay, let's try it. Date part, hour. And the date is going to be our total playtime. Okay, let's see what that looks like. See, that's not right. It's just getting 13, but it's not getting the 17 days. So basically, you know, he played for 17 days and 13 hours. I mean, I guess I could multiply that by the number of days. There's got to be an easier way. Um, Sum of date part hour. Oh, here we go. Kind of silly that it requires such a crazy. Oh, that was from Interworks. I wish there was a way for me to show you the formula. It's just ridiculous. I just copied and pasted it though. Total hours played. Oh yeah, I know what I'll do. I'll show it to you in a text box. So it's the sum of the date part hour. So basically it's that part. It's the date part hour like you were talking about. And it's just multiplying that times the, I'm not sure what 3,600 is, maybe number of minutes. Yeah, by the number of minutes, we need another calculated field on top of the date part. Yep. So this is adding in the minutes and seconds and so forth. Yep. But I wonder if this is going to work because I don't see anything in here that's getting it down to the day. So I would also need an additional calculate plus for the day. So that's not quite good. Thank you so much. This worked. Sadly, I need to know whenever it exceeds 24 hours. That's unfortunate. He's already flipped it up. In the bottom half, he's provided a formula and explanations. Can't believe this is so hard. Okay. 
Okay, I don't want that. Any duration. Any duration. This is seconds. You just give me that formula. I wonder if I could do this in Excel. Get it? I give up. I'll do it later. Um, not not that important. Okay, so we're not going to have anything that's going to use the um, the uh, time plate, unfortunately. So let's get rid of that. And I think this is too. Um, you know, sorry, I'm going to adjust this color so it'll match. Okay, I got to do every single. Um, stats, this. This. This goes on. Stats. 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 And then this would be interesting. If I could, I need to, I need to fill some more here. This is just going to be a different sheet. I think that looks pretty good. Maybe this should go the other way. Just go across the bottom. I do need to make this match. Edit colors. So on that one, I do need that tool tip. Go ahead and grab that. As of. I need it in my, not in there, I need it in my detail. Because I'm going to need it for the filter. Game all mode. So that's actually not a mode. Um, that would be all stats screen. Okay. And then so all stats screen a little bit more sense instead of all stats. So then I will make this guy be taller and just put that all stats at the bottom. Let's go ahead and put this let's get rid of that. Let's go with a vertical and then we're going to do the all stats screen and then we're going to do a horizontal on top of that. Brown bottom and then put our Invictus stats. Actually, yeah, I think that's pretty cool. So then let's do this. Get rid of these. Make this guy go all the way across. Put the width. Minus 
this with full air. Stupid total hours played. God, I, can't, I hate that I don't have that on here. Uh, I would like to date diff in our format. So it would just be date diff of what? Um, sent the data. Okay, cool. Thanks, Evil But I'm happy. I can't wait to look at it. Um, let's see. The date diff of. Your total play time as a discrete value here. And that will help me to see what it needs to be. So now my total hours played is going to be the date diff in our format. Uh, the start date is going to be um, 1 1 1900. Right? And then the end date is going to be the total play time. Does that do it? So I'll copy and paste this so you guys can see it. And Amon, maybe you tell me if you think this is right. I mean, that. Looks like it might be right. So the formula that I used was this. So the date diff in our format of January 1st, 1900, with uh, between that and the total playtime, you would need a nested calc. So grab date diff on day plus date diff on hour. Hey, Native, how you doing, man? I'm traveling this week. I'm in a hotel room with extremely slow Wi-Fi, so I can't actually stream real Tetris. So I'm making do with this data analytics. So um, I put out a call today on Twitter and on Facebook asking for people to send me their Tetris data. So basically, people sent me screenshots, and you can kind of see them here in the pop-up. So they sent me just their different images of their different uh, stats, and I just typed them all up and I'm putting together a little analysis. I think it's kind of interesting and fascinating to look at some of these different stats that players that are different than us, right? Because it's, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. But what I'm just a little bit stuck right now on a formula. So what I need to figure out is what is 397 hours? Is that, let's see. So 397 hours divided by 24 hours in a day is 16.5 days. So I actually think this is close because this is saying, yeah, this would be 16.5 days. So I think this total hours played is actually that, that math is correct. Let's take a look at this one. So this is saying I played 273 hours. This total times played is January 12th, 1900. So that would be 273 divided by 24 hours in a day would be 11.3. Yeah, so this is actually, it's actually right. I think, yeah, because we don't start on day zero, which is why I'm getting off by one day because the first day is actually January 1st. So I think that's right. So this is cool. So let's go ahead and get rid of this. And we have our total hours played. Let's put that first. Get this to the end so I can see it better. Rotations per drop. Let's do total drops. Rotations per drop. Drop distance. There we go. 
So we'll just give that a little bit of shading. Here. Yeah, I think this is ready to be published. Native, how you doing tonight? Are you still playing Tetris? You a bud, I can't wait to check out your stats. I'm serious. I love this stuff. Fit entire view. Oh shoot. Edit that height and make it three hundred. That's too much. Two fifty. Let's see I got a text here. Um I think that'll you so, Iman, do you think the string, do you think my, I think this formula, so what you're suggesting, what you're suggesting is I do, you could have, uh, let's see here. Uh, string, date diff, and date format, start date. Oh, so you're saying how many days and hours? Well, I don't want to, I don't necessarily want to say like you've been playing for three days and so many hours because it's, you haven't, it makes it sound like you've just been sitting there for 30, 17 days in a row. So I actually prefer just to have it in like total hours played because I think that gives a better, more realistic description. But thank you. I really appreciate you sending me that formula. It's, it's, it's really great. But uh, for this case, I think I want to go with, with what I had. But, um, but thank you. So now I think this is ready to go. Um, oh yeah, the last thing I have to do is put together this, uh, I gotta give this a name. This will be called um, Player Profiles. And then I need to link to these game images. And then I need to have a way to get back. So what I need to do is make a dashboard that will be called um, Game Images. Hmm. Can I hide a dashboard? Hmm. Maybe I won't even bother. I'll just have it like that. You can't view the full image. Unless I host those. What I could do is I could host those on the website on daddio.tv and then that could be a link to the image. You click it and it shows you the image on daddio.tv in a new window. That's what I'll do. Um, so I'll do that later. So I think this is done. Let me go ahead and publish this. Um, so to publish this stuff to like the last few things I have to do to actually put this online um, requires me to like do some stuff that's outside of Tableau. And unfortunately, um, I'm only on my laptop screen. I um, I can't share my whole screen evidently when it's just a laptop screen. So it'd be really boring for you guys because you actually wouldn't get to see what I'm doing. Um, so I guess um, give a few minutes and see if anybody um, has any suggestions. And if not, we'll go ahead and call it a night. But I'll give you guys a few minutes in the meantime. I'll kind of walk through some of our findings that we had. So um, so basically what we ended up with is on the, the all stats screen, it's got some interesting um, stats there, like total hours played does not appear under Invicta stats or Tetris 99 stats, um, only appears there. I'm gonna move this. Um, it only appears on this screen. Tetramino location rotations only appear on that screen and Tetramino drop distance only appears on that screen. These total drops and rotations per drop or formula fields that that I created just trying to make sense of these two fields like tetramino rotations what does that even mean so I think what that means is every time a button is pressed to rotate a piece um, but it is, this number by itself doesn't really tell us anything what we really need to know is how many times are you doing that um, per piece so what I figured it out is how many times did you actually drop a piece 
Um, so that can be calculated as how many total singles plus total doubles plus triples plus Tetris line players you had. Um, it doesn't matter how many lines you had, just how many, how many times did you drop a piece. So now I'm sitting here thinking that wouldn't actually be because, because you could drop a piece without clearing a line. Um, so now that I'm thinking about that, that might not be the best way. So maybe total drops is not. Let's see what tetra mean. Let's see what rotations per line looks like. That could be more accurate. Let's see here. I'm glad I talked that through because I did not think of that until just now. So we would make a new calculated field that would be tetramino or rotations per line, and that would be our tetramino rotations divided by our total lines, total lines. So let's see what that looks like. Coming in as a whole number, that's fine. We'll change our default properties to be decimal. Rotations per drop are higher because, yep, it's a smaller number. Because now I'm multiplying our a single that counts one, but a double counts two, so that means your rotations per line is. Um, I don't know which is more accurate. I think that would actually want to go the other way. The goal would be rotations per Low, so I'm going to reverse rotations per drop. I'll reverse it to go that way. Um, rotations per line. Actually, the correlation is not. I still think this is more accurate because this this one counts a Tetris. If you clear a Tetris with a single piece, it's counting that four times, whereas this only counts it one time. Um, So I will take out, well, I'll leave rotations per drop, but I'll take out rotations per line. Um, it's not an accurate name, though, because it's not total drops. It would be total clear events. That's what it is. So I need to rename total drops to total Clear events, and then our uh, total line clear events. Um, there really needs a better name for that. Total line clear events. If anybody can think of a better name for that, please send me a suggestion. So basically, what we're looking here for is anytime a line is cleared, it doesn't matter if it's a single or a double or a triple, it doesn't matter. It's just that you're clearing a line. Um, Tetris, just, the stats don't tell us how many times you actually like put a piece down. But they do. We do know how many singles, doubles, and triples you have. So what would you call that? We'll call it a line clear for now, in case a line clear event, unless someone can come up with something better. So now our rotations per line clear event is what that should say. Per And we'll get rid of our per line because that doesn't really, I don't think it tells us what we want, what we, what we care about. So back to this, oops, back to this. So there we go. 
Uh, we're going to delete this. We will So this is our dashboard that we finished with. Uh, so anyways, let me just finish walking through this. So um, this is our rotations per line clear event. And let me go ahead and make that bigger. Uh, let me make this bigger. Okay. So, um, so then we get down into our actual Tetris 99 and Invicta stats. And then so we can see, you know, stats like total games played, um, singles per game, doubles per game, and so forth, triples per game, T-spin doubles, that, sh that should be a decimal. Let's go to that. All of these smaller numbers like this. Actually, all of these numbers should be decimals per game. Back-to-backs per game. And I wish there was a way to do this all at once. Should have done this. If I would have just got one of them right and then copied and pasted it, duplicated it over and over again, I wouldn't have to do this over and over again. So anytime you work in Tableau, it's if you ever do, it's my recommendation is to get one thing perfect and then just copy it. Not always easy to do when you're in the flow. Um, and actually, this isn't really that interesting in this scenario. Total drops per game. So we already have a ton of stats. So I don't think there's any need to. Per game. KOs per game. KOs per game should definitely be decimal. Okay, so now let's go back and take a look at this in here. That looks good. Okay, I think this is some interesting stuff so far, and uh, it will definitely get more interesting as we get more stats in here. Um, but yeah, so basically we can see all these stats and see totals per game. And then what I'm going to do is once I publish this online, uh, right there where it says click to view full image, and actually let me make that a little bit smaller so it doesn't take up so much space. That is a huge, it's a little bit distracting how much space it takes up. Um, let's just try 200 by 200. It's kind of cool, I think, to be able to see that it's actually coming from those stats, but I don't want it to take up so much space. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. Yeah, I think that's better. So let me just fix these real quick. That seems good. So then what you'll be able to do is when you're online, you can click it and actually view the full size picture, which will be pretty cool. So um, I will publish the link 
um, to Daddio, I'm sorry, to my to the Twitter account. And I'll actually go ahead and put uh, a little blog post up on daddio.tv, just talking about it and, you know, kind of talking about some of the findings that are interesting. And, uh, but we definitely want more data because, you know, there's only so much you can tell by looking at just three players here and four players here and four players here. Um, imagine this same data with, you know, 50 players or 100 players, we could have some really cool scatter plots where you can see some some really, really interesting stats. So we can tell things like what determines uh, win rate or, um, you know, just some different things like that. It could be really interesting to see how things like, uh, you know, do, do more Tetrises result in more wins or do more, do more T-spins result in more wins. Um, okay, cool. I appreciate that, Icy. Um, but I really would really want to see, though, is the game by game stats, because all this, all we can tell right here is just win rate. It's just how many games did you win? But we can't tell how many games you finished second, third or fourth and so forth. So by playing online and playing with my streams, I'll, I'll actually just log your games for you. You don't have to do anything. Just play with me. And when I see your name in the list, I'll just log that as a game entry. And then what we can start to do is tie these things all together. So, you know, if we can see IC stats, then like IC's in there, native Pollock stats, and we can be able to see, okay, well, here's how his overall stats look like. You know, this person is a really heavy Tetris player. He's a really heavy uh, T-spin player or, or whatever. And then how does that look like? How does that translate into average place, uh, consistency and stuff like that? So I'm really excited for it. It's the whole reason why I started doing uh, Twitch was just so I can get more access to data. I've been logging all my own data for a long time, um, but I just wanted more. Um, so I tried reaching out to Tetris, to Nintendo. I sent Nintendo an email begging them for access to their data. Um, I tried reaching out to Mr. Nine Lives, asking him for access to data. Um, no luck. So I just figured, well, I'll just get it myself then. So anything you guys can do to help, I'm happy to do it. And uh, I know it's, it's a lot of work. I'm not sure how much fun this is for you guys to watch. But for me, I love it. It's just a lot of fun. I love Tetris. I love data. Um, so hopefully this is fun for you guys. And uh, hopefully I'll see you around soon. Thanks. Oh, you know what? Let's go ahead and I'll do a raid. Let's see if we can figure out who's playing. And if you guys don't mind, just stick around for a second and let me raid somebody. I know there's uh, got to be somebody out there playing. So just stick with me just one second, guys. I suck at this. I never remember where to go. I see. Uh, you're an expert. If you don't mind, if you can tell me where I go to raid someone, I would appreciate it. You tried to be, and you didn't, got closer. Good. Um, you, Ewa, but do you stream? I would love to watch you play. You can type in chat raid username. Oh, sweet. Thank you. That's way, way easier. I was trying to find that one page. Uh, let's see here. Let's raid kimchi. All right. This is a shot slash raid. And then I need to put, actually, I probably need to put just a username. Cool. You're the man. I see. All right, you guys have a good night. Thanks again.
Hola. Umbarabaraba. I love you.
Yeah, it was good. Um, And so, of course, it was not so easy to learn their names. It was a fun little game.
Facebook and I, and I had five people send me like, all their stuff. So then I came home, oh, I came to the hotel room, and I typed it all in at the same time, and then I just did a quick screen just to help me analyze it. So I was like, this is fine. I'm like, I did that, and then someone was like, on there, and there was a bunch of me, and a mom was on there, and Aaron was on there, and we just like did the screening on the whole time. We fast forward, or we forced it like two hours, like totally. to like see the whole experience. So I thought it was really fun. People people I guess we'll see how, how it goes. And everybody seemed really interested in it. Some of the newer they were like, oh I don't know if they want to be back in the world for the last time. So and then there were people who were watching like, oh I'm gonna see all the videos that I have seen and people who watch who are in the audience and they're gonna send me their data. So that's awesome. So yeah. so as far as I know, I'm the only one that's never been done before. Because it was fun. And then years later, it ended up being like all the way worth it. Because everybody was like, oh, this guy's kind of the lead. So it's kind of like that. Like, I really enjoy it. I think I'm making good content. I just don't have that many people watching yet. But I think, I think it'll pay off. So, anyways, I was just. Sorry, I'm talking about it so much. I just, I just literally just now got off of it, and I was kind of excited about it. So, yeah, that was my day.